video on configuring your uh, legacy CopyStar MFPs for um, LDAP uh, browsing. So just uh, how to configure the machine on uh, getting to your Active Directory server and being able to browse the users on that server and grab their email address um, and add it to the address book uh, just so you guys don't have to manually um, create address book entries for scanning. First thing we're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to grab the IP of your machine, the IP address of your machine. You're going to want to take that, type it into a web browser, and um, go ahead and hit enter. Once you're there, you should be taken to a web page that looks uh, similar to this. Uh, today I'm going to be working on a uh, Task Alpha 7550CI, um, but the settings and the configuration are uh, basically it's all the same no matter what model um, because the uh, the controller is a legacy controller, so the um, settings are uh, fairly specific to all these type of machines. After we're going to hit the web page, what we're going to do is we're going to log in as an admin. Um, the username and the password are both the same. So this is the uh, username and this is also going to be the password. So I'm going to click admin or I'm going to type admin and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and type admin as well, capital A, lowercase d-m-i-n and we're going to log in. Once we logged in, we're going to go down to our settings. And then once we're in our settings, we're going to go up to our advanced. Once we're in advanced, we're going to go on the left-hand side and we're going to drop down to LDAP. Once we hover over LDAP, we're going to notice that this little menu opens up and then when this opens up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to click General. Now you can see uh, this is basically the basic LDAP settings page. Uh, by default, the protocol is turned off. So um, uh, once you uh, have your settings input, do make sure that you uh, actually turn the protocol on. That's the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do. After I do that, I'm going to go ahead and go down to my LDAP server name. Now my LDAP server name can either be the host name of my Active Directory server uh, or a server that's running Active Directory uh, that has all my users in it and stuff like that, or it can be the IP address of that server. Uh, the server I'm going to be working on today uh, is a test server. So for instance, my test server's host name is uh, i2kdc2. Uh, so if I wanted to use the host name, I'd basically just sort of type it like that. It doesn't need any uh, slashes or wax or anything like that. Um, if I didn't want to use my host name, I could then uh, just go ahead and do my IP address. LDAP port number is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, unless you guys are using a specialized port, uh, go ahead and just leave this the way it is. We have a search timeout underneath the LDAP uh, port. Uh, the search timeout is basically the amount of time that the MFP is going to be waiting for a response from your server when it does its initial uh, query uh, to look for uh, users. So. Um, one thing to note here, um, if your Active Directory uh, gets a lot of communication during the day or if the network is running slow or anything like that, it might be uh, worth it for you guys to increase that timeout. Um, increasing the timeout is not going to uh, lock the machine up or anything like that. Um, increasing the timeout would just, you know, uh, ensure that the machine um, is going to wait a set amount of time um, before it uh, stops communicating um, with your LDAP uh, server. So, like I said, if your uh, network is running slow, or if you notice you, uh, you know, your Active Directory server just gets a lot of communication during the day, and sometimes, you know, it can take a lot to can take a significant amount of time to respond, you, you know, you can go ahead and increase this, you know, three minutes, five minutes, whatever. Uh, you can just go ahead and increase it. Um, but for today's uh, video, we're just going to go ahead and leave it at the default. Um, underneath my timeout, I have my login username and password. Um, this is going to be a uh, domain user um, that does have access to the uh, Active Directory um, services. Uh, on the server that we're browsing to. Uh, so do make sure that um, you know you guys do put in your domain name backslash and then the username that does have the rights to uh, browse the server and uh, access the Active Directory. I uh, have my username in here. From here I go ahead and type my password. Uh, 
Um, after I'm good with my login username and password, I would uh, I have my uh, max search results. The search results, again, it's pretty straightforward. It's just the um, amount of um, names that the uh, MFP is going to accept from your, um, you know, your Active Directory server when it does its uh, search for a username. Um, if you guys need your users to get more search results, you can increase this. If they're getting too many results when they're searching at the address book, you guys can go ahead and uh, decrease this as well. Either way. Um, Next thing we have is going to be the search base. Um, the search base often is the uh, most challenging for a lot of people just because they're not 100% familiar with how it should really be configured. Um, the easiest, easiest way to do your search base is basically just go to your Active Directory server, um, find the uh, folder or container within Active Directory Sites and Services that contains your users. Right click, go to the properties, uh, and then uh, within the properties in the attribute editor, you're going to find the uh, distinguished name of that folder. And that distinguished name can be uh, used as your search base. I'm going to show you guys an example of this. So um, let me just drag this over. So right here, I have my um, I have an Active Directory server up and running. Um, I've given my uh, Active Directory uh, domain name um, as i2kcorp.local. And then um, I have a bunch of folders in here. Um, my main folder that has probably the most of the users for today's um, you know video is all going to be directly in my main users folder. So like I said, it would be as easy as when you do your search base, if you know all your users exist in one folder and you only want the machine to browse to that folder and look in that folder for users, then basically get to that folder, you can right click, you go to properties, you'll go over here to the attribute editor tab, and then you're going to find the distinguished name. And then the distinguished name is going to have this line right here. So this is basically what you would use for your file path. So the file path would start with the CN and then would end with the local. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this over here. And then you can see basically in my search base I'm going to type in CN equals users comma DC equals I2K Corp comma DC equals local. And again, this uh, the DC uh, I2K Corp and local were picked up directly because this is my domain name up here. So the folder that I'm browsing to exists in this domain, so that's why it picked up uh, those properties. So again, it would basically be CN equals users. I'm going to do a comma, no space, DC equals my domain name, comma, no space, DC equals local. I just make it all the same. DC equals local. So that's basically my uh, search, my search base. So this means when I am at the MFP and I am searching my external address book, the machine will go directly to my users folder within my i2k corp uh, do domain. If you have your users um, further drilled down in other folders, um, you could go ahead and again, just do the exact same thing. Right click, go to properties, find the attribute editor, and then um, find the uh, distinguished name and then just pop that distinguished name in there and then it should, it should be uh, fine. After we're good with the search base, we're going to drop down to the LDAP security. If your Active Directory is running um, extended security on it, um, um, you would go ahead and choose either SSL or Start TLS. Um, by default, the Active Directory servers do not uh, really use this. So if you're just running a simple you know, domain controller with Active Directory services and you know you're not running any extended uh, security on it, go ahead and just leave this uh, the way it is. Um, basically after that we can uh, drop down if we're happy with the settings uh, then we can ba basically drop down to the test um, click on test and then just make sure it works and you can see I got a successful uh, okay when I did my test
So basically, the machine is now able to, uh, through the LDAP protocol, browse to my server at this IP through this port number. It's logging in as this user, and it is able to browse these uh, this user folder which is on this uh, domain here. So, uh, you know, everything uh, from here is successful. We got a successful test. So that means when the uh, users walk up to the MFP or the copier, they'll hit the uh, scan button. They'll uh, click on external address book, and then uh, they'll be able to search, uh, you know, a uh, first name or last name. And um, if that user exists within your Active Directory uh, users folder, uh, the machine will go ahead and grab that user and uh, populate the email address automatically. That is, oh, there is one other thing really quick I wanted to go over with uh, you guys. If we drop back over, um, after you are happy with this and you get a successful test, go ahead and click sub Submit. That'll save your settings. After we test sub Submit, what, um, if you look over here under the LDAP, uh, again, what you're going to notice is you're going to notice another uh, heading under here called uh, EXT Address Book. This just stands for the External Address Book. If you click on this, uh, what you're going to notice is you're going to notice some settings and stuff like this. This is um, all this stuff can be left at the default. This is basically just um, how the MFP sort of searches the uh, user record. Uh, within Active Directory. You know, it's going to be uh, looking for the, uh, you know, display name, the uh, L LDAP attributes, and this is how it resolves um, resolves looking for an email address as opposed to like a scan to folder address or whatever. Um, so again, nothing in here really needs to be changed um, unless you want to uh, display uh, from the user's last name as opposed to displaying from the first name. But if you just leave this all default, um, it should, uh, should be perfect for you guys. That is basically it.